Welcome, FACO fans! I am Avon, and you are watching FGO Tips. Today we're talking about daily quests, probably the most reliable way to collect QP, embers, and materials for skills and ascension. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Inside Caldea Gate is the daily quest section, where you'll find a set of quests which refresh every 24 hours at midnight UTC. That's 7pm Eastern Standard Time or 4pm Pacific Standard Time. Daily quests come in three varieties, and each variety can be challenged at four different difficulty levels, which makes a total of 12 quests each day. Of those three quest types, the first is Ember Gathering. The four levels of difficulty are recommended for level 5 with a cost of 10 AP, level 10 with a cost of 20 AP, level 25 with a cost of 30 AP, and level 40 with a cost of 40 AP. Each quest will present you with three battles against any enemies of three different classes. The first two classes rotate depending on the current day of the week. You'll see Lancers and Assassins on Mondays and Thursdays, Sabers and Riders on Tuesdays and Fridays, and Archers and Casters on Wednesdays and Saturdays. On all six days, the third enemy class will be Berserker. On Sunday, the enemies you face will be a random selection of all seven Servant classes. The enemies you'll face throughout the Ember Gathering quests are all fairly similar. The Hand of Dawn, Arm of Dawn, Strong Arm of Dawn, and Divine Arm of Dawn. Each enemy variant attacks once per turn and has to charge up before they unleash a slightly stronger Hellfire attack. After they are defeated, they will drop either the 1 star Ember of Wisdom, 2 star Light of Wisdom, 3 star Fire of Wisdom, or 4 star Blaze of Wisdom cards. The stronger enemy variants, such as the Divine Arm of Dawn, are much more likely to drop the higher tier experience cards. We already talked about these cards in our Enhancing Servants video, but basically they are used to level up any servant, and they'll grant an even bigger boost when matched with servants of the same class. That's what makes these quests the best way to increase your servant's current level. Six days out of the week, you know exactly what class of enemies you'll be facing, which allows you to build a party full of optimal counters. This, combined with a powerful support servant, should allow you to tackle quests even higher than your current level. Each quest, you'll have to fight through three waves with three of these hand-type enemies each. Within a given quest, each enemy will be approximately the same level as the others and with approximately the same attack strength and HP. So this means that servants with skills or a noble phantasm that deals moderate damage to all targets are going to help you out the most in this case. The second type of daily quest is called the Training Ground. The AP required for each difficulty level matches the costs of the Ember Gathering quests. 10, 20, 30, and 40, but the recommended levels are a bit higher at 10, 25, 40, and 60. The training ground will pit you against three rounds of enemies which all belong to a single class. That class rotates each day. Sabers on Sundays, Archers on Mondays, Lancers on Tuesdays, Berserkers on Wednesdays, Riders on Thursdays, Casters on Fridays, and Assassins on Saturdays. There are a handful of possible enemies you can face for each class, and they are going to be a bit tougher than the hand-type enemies from the Ember Gathering quests. In the final round, you are likely to face off against a fairly powerful servant who will have full access to their abilities and Noble Phantasm. If you do manage to overcome them though, these enemies will drop a variety of items. Most common among them are ascension materials specific to the class of enemy you are facing, like pieces and monuments, as well as skill up materials specific to the class, like shining gems, magic gems, and secret gems. Depending on which version of the quest you run, the level of rewards will vary. For instance, the 10 AP quest is going to be your best bet for pieces and shining gems, whereas the 40 AP quest is the quickest way to collect monuments and secret gems. Occasionally, embers drop here also, and sometimes even more rare ascension materials. On Wednesday, there is a faint chance of getting the Claw of Chaos. On Thursday, there is a tiny chance of getting a Dragon's Reverse Scale. And on Friday, there is a slim chance of getting a Heart of the Foreign God. These quests are one of the best ways to improve the skills of your servants and collect the materials necessary for ascension. The enemies in these quests will be higher levels than the enemies in the other two types of daily quests, but you still have a big advantage here. All of the enemies will share a single class. This allows you to build a party full of perfect counters. Remember to grab a support servant of the right class and you'll be resistant to every single enemy attack. 
On top of that, you'll be doing extra damage with every attack, allowing you to clear the higher level enemies in less time. Since the final round will usually result in facing one enemy which is much stronger than all the others, you might want to rely on servants with powerful single target skills or noble phantasms. They are going to be your best bet for doing maximum damage to that one powerful enemy instead of less damage to every enemy at once. The third and final quest type is called Enter the Treasure Vault. The four difficulty levels here mirror the Ember Gathering quests and range from recommended level 5 to recommended level 40. These quests will also pit you against three rounds of fights against a single class of enemy. In these battles you will be able to collect large quantities of Quantum Points or QP. Best of all, these quests combine the lower levels from the first set of quests with the single enemy class from the second set of quests, making them the easiest of all to complete. At the moment, you will only face caster class enemies here, so make sure to bring your strongest party of riders. Depending on the difficulty level you select, you are likely to face a mix of Door of the Undead, Door of the Brave, Door of the Saint, and Door of the Champion enemies. They behave similar to the hand-type enemies from the Ember Gathering quests, attacking once per turn, charging their gauge slowly, and eventually using a more powerful attack if you give them enough time. But based on their levels and single class, it shouldn't be too difficult for you to defeat them before they even have the chance. The first time you complete any of these quests in a given day, Ember Gathering, Training Grounds, or Enter the Vault, you will be awarded with between 1 and 4 mana prisms depending on the difficulty level you tackle. Any of the 12 quests can be repeated as often as you like throughout the day, but the mana prisms will only be awarded the first time. There's a lot to be said about these mana prisms, but this video is getting a bit long already, so look forward to a new video on that topic soon. Depending on your needs from time to time, you might find yourself gravitating towards different types of daily quests, but remember to check in with them frequently to maximize your rewards. Also be on the lookout for periodic events that reduce the AP cost for different types of daily quests by half. Those are perfect times to collect and grind. So, which daily quests have you been spending your time on? Leave a comment below and let me know. Subscribe for more tips, and as always, thanks for watching.